A small group of Chinese soldiers from the Mississippi Delta, some young and some in their 40s, fought in World War II. The story of how these Chinese came to Mississippi and what led to their experience in the war is both personal and universal. During World War II, 13,000 Chinese served in the United States Armed Forces. Surprisingly, over 180 Chinese came from the Delta region of the state of Mississippi. When you think about it, 180 Chinese serving in the U.S. military from the Mississippi Delta is a disproportionate number for a state not well known for its Chinese citizens. How did these Chinese come to live in the Mississippi Delta? Who were these men? Why did so many of them enlist in the armed services? Did growing up in the Mississippi Delta influence their sense of duty and patriotism? I was tra trained for, uh, you know, invasion, but land, land crap, you know. You know, you hit the beach, the land, the land troops. Well, 32nd decreasing, and they assigned me 107 medical club, you know, to, to take the wood soldiers from front line to the to the head station. And the idea was that if, even if we only save one life through the effort, it would be worth it. Mm -hmm. So I was in the Ninth Air Force. And our planes drop paratroopers. We know when we go overseas that we're going to be participate in combat duty. We know there are elements of danger. There are possibility we never probably when we come back home alive. But we feel all of us feel everyone in in the whole group in, in the whole army. I think everyone in the whole army that felt that. That was our duty. Our country called us to serve that particular duty, and we have sworn to be to, to serve. So we just think it's about we just serve what we can, do what we can. The Mississippi Delta has often been characterized as the most southern place in the American South, socially conservative, racially segregated and predominantly rural. It is an area where social and cultural characteristics are unique and extreme. The Delta lies between the Mississippi and the Yazoo Rivers and hugs the northwestern region of the state. Its name evokes images of lazy summers, large magnolia trees with plantation-style homes off in the distance, Folks sipping cold iced tea and lounging on porch swings or rocking in chairs on the veranda while watching farmers and sharecroppers tending the soil and workers picking cotton in the fields. This region has many ghosts from yesteryear, as it was once notoriously known for its use of slave labor. It later became a place with the largest number of freed black farmers. Its small towns birthed many of the nation's blues and jazz legends, while its political history connotes racism and segregation. Who would have thought that this region of the Deep South would develop into an enclave for hundreds of Chinese families? Let's take a step back in time and look at the broader picture of Chinese immigration to America. In the mid-19th century, many Chinese from China's southeastern province of Guangdong began to arrive in America, lured by the prospect of gold and the hope of a better life. America became known as Gum San, Gold Mountain. When the mines dried up, the Chinese did not leave the United States. They went on to build railroads and levees, labored on farms and fisheries, and worked as launderers and cooks. The Chinese laborers who went to work in the South after the Civil War have all but disappeared from history, with very few statistics that note the number of Chinese who once resided in the Mississippi Delta. Early evidence of this southern migration is found in the 1870 census, which recorded 16 Chinese men living in the state of Mississippi. What brought them to the area? Letters and newspaper articles indicate that these Chinese men were recruited as laborers on farms once cared for by slaves now free men. These 16 Chinese lived in Bolivar County, one of the 18 counties that comprise the Mississippi Delta. 
In the 1880s, the Mississippi Delta Chinese community grew to 50 people, with 28 of them living in Washington County, and the other 22 scattered across neighboring counties within the Delta. During this time, Chinese laborers were plentiful, hardworking, and inexpensive to hire. They were willing to do almost any job asked of them at great risk to themselves. Because of this and the fact they dressed differently, ate differently, and spoke a language that sounded so strange, the Chinese worker was seen as a threat to white labor. That threat led to fear. That fear became the impetus for the Chinese Exclusion Act passed by Congress in 1882. This act prohibited the immigration of Chinese into the United States. In 1892, an amendment was made to the Exclusion Act, and the exclusionary laws were extended for another 10 years. In 1902, it was extended again, and then became permanent in 1904. Many of the Chinese came directly to the Mississippi Delta from China. Others came from various regions within the United States soon after the Transcontinental Railroad was completed, or when mining work dried up. Some would think the Chinese migration to the South was natural as the landscape and climate of the Mississippi Delta and Southern China were similar. Whatever the reason, they came. Many immigrated under their own names because they fulfilled certain criteria specified in the exclusionary laws, while others came as paper sons. A paper son was a Chinese man, young or old, who entered the United States using false documents declaring that he was a son of a Chinese man already living in the States, thus allowing him to come into the country legally. Whichever route they used to make their way to the U.S., they arrived committed to working in the family businesses of their fathers and sponsors. As they did, they settled down and put deep roots in the Mississippi Delta. Families were started, businesses were built, and soon their mark became apparent as communities developed and their lives and those of others were bettered. According to the 1890 census, the number of Chinese in the Mississippi Delta area grew to 147 and almost doubled during the first decade of the 20th century. The Chinese of the Mississippi Delta faced enormous challenges both socially and economically. Yet this region uniquely afforded the Chinese opportunities that other areas in the United States did not. In the early 1900s, more Chinese moved to the South and set up small grocery stores. These stores catered specifically to the black community, filling a void left when plantation stores closed. Consequently, the Chinese found themselves filling fundamental needs through their small town groceries and markets to both the black and white communities, and they began to be accepted in both groups. As their businesses grew, so did their social and economic status. Although the Chinese Exclusion Act was repealed in 1943, it would be World War II and the military service of these Chinese men that would be the catalyst, changing the trajectory of the development of this unique community in the Mississippi Delta. I went up to know. I just do my duty. I went up to do their duty if the nation to call them to do it. I went there. I went there. I went there. They'd be proud to be a Chinese. This is their story. <laughs> 